Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of God this morning? It is a beautiful and a wonderful thing to be conscious amongst the living. It is a good thing that we are here this morning. Hallelujah. The book of Psalm 150 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his exceeding greatness. He said, Praise him with the sound of the temple. Don't 
Amen. God is able. He is great. He is great. That's why the scripture said that we should bless him for his exceeding. His exceeding greatness. Oh man. God did not have to work us up. He didn't have to do it this morning. But yet you are in his presence. You think you better? Bible study in the morning and in the afternoon. 
the woman, women leader, is asking, uh, please join her to visit and uh, love it and to welcome the newest member to Harvest Intercontinental Church. Amen? Yes. So let us please try to go for this um, time. Hallelujah. Yes. And also, we want to talk about a program that is coming up. Amen? It's on the 9th of July. It will start on the 6th. Amen? And we are encouraging everyone to be a part of the um, the revival, the revival be the six and seven in the evening. There will be two powerful men of God that will be speaking during the revival. Don't miss out. Invite somebody. Come and be a part of this. Amen. Especially to the members. Do not stay behind. No matter this thing will start planning a long time. Put in the time. So that, that day, we can be here first to welcome our guests. Amen? Yeah. Oh, we are having a program, we stay behind, and the guests come, they don't look good. Amen? So I'm encouraging all the members to be a part of this the revival. And Saturday, we are going to be having a full sale. So start telling your co workers, your colleagues at job, tell them we'll be having a full year selling just for the fundraiser of this building. Amen? We'll be having some good roasted meat, roasted fish, um, chicken, spare ribs, hot chicken, you name it, dry rice. We'll be having all of those good, good things. So bring your friends, amen, amen, so that they can come and support the work that we are doing. And we'll be having a sandwich for the children. We'll be having a lot of good stuff. You all know, when we, when we say we're doing something, we do a thing. So y'all come and be in part, support this, this work. And then Sunday, we will be here again. Um, I will call the first lady that will elaborate on it more. Just how many hours? Three hours. Hallelujah. The praise and worship will 
be there. Hallelujah. They will galvanize everything. You know, with some wonderful worship songs. We are going to sing and we're going to praise the Lord. And then we are also going to pray. So I want to encourage you to encourage somebody to encourage another person to be a part. So that means on Friday this week, we'll not have a prayer meeting anymore. Okay? So please do do your best to come and to pray. Our program is week after next Friday. In short, it's next week because the week starts today. Right? Yeah. This week starts today. So our program is next week. I am begging you in the name of Jesus. Just as Elder Sedia said, let's not come and you know, let's not you know stay and then people come and wait for us. The revival is very important. Hallelujah. So people, you know, you 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 find yourself in a place in God where you never wanted to be. You know, the prayer, the worship, everything is just dry. I know you know, I know you know what I'm talking about. You want to get back to that place of fellowship. You want to get back in that place of communion. It's like your spiritual life is dying out. This is a busy country. We all know it. If you are interested in being revived, if you want to come back alive for God, if you want the hunger for God to be installed again in your life, it's an opportunity for you. Thursday and Friday, we are going to be here. We'll lift up our voice. We'll hear the word of God. We're going to be revived. And then I also, uh, um, on Sunday, our program starts at 1 p.m. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not this Sunday, right? Yes. Next Sunday, so during our anniversary, we want to give you all the time to prepare and come. I, I think uh, uh, the women's ministry, is, really, is there a meeting with regards to Sunday uh, uh, since January? Is there any meeting with the women with regards to Sunday? All right, okay, so we are going to communicate with the women. Also, our attire for that entire program, especially for Saturday and Sunday, will be our t shirts okay? We have established as a church that um, to our contribution towards uh, the program is going to be how much? 200. 200. We are begging you to come and do your contribution so you can carry your package. Your package consists of what, a T-shirt, a face cap and uh, a mug, okay? So we are really running out of time and we have all of that available. So just immediately after the service, please see me, do your contribution and get your gift, okay? And uh, for our children, we said it's going to be $12, okay? Now out of our, uh, um, also we are encouraging you please to follow up your partners, those who are partners, those who you gave the letters to. We are expecting uh, uh, a bumper, I would say harvest from your work, from your sowing. Hallelujah. We believe that we are praying, we are trusting God that the hearts of our partners will be open. Amen. To contribute towards our, our, our project, our project, our current project is to acquire this facility for the church. Okay? So that's what we are working towards. Please do your best to follow up these people. We thank God we are already having some so people coming in, you know, with their, with, their, uh, with their support, we bless God for that. We believe that the money that we need is in your pockets and in the pockets of the people you know. So we are trusting God that we have all of that together. One or two changes. We realize that it's important for our children to be an integral part of our worship. And so that's why you saw the children here. We encourage you to bring your kids to church. We cannot trust this world. Okay, we cannot trust the system to raise our children for us. But we bless God for a community like this where our children can be, we can be challenged to grow in Christ and our children as well. And to encourage ushers also, don't let the children sit when it's worship. Let them stand, let them be a part, let them participate. These are the leaders of tomorrow. Okay, we must leave a legacy. God forbid that we lose a generation. It should not be said of us that our children grew and never knew the Lord. Now is the time to begin to plant the seeds. Okay? This is the right time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope I'm not forgetting. Okay, very important. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. As a church, we have decided as a leadership that we want to organize a discipleship class. Okay? Amen. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Sometimes the reason why you struggle in your life you say, I've been in Christ for 10 years, but you don't have any fruit. It's because there's no foundation. Now our discipleship class is like a foundation.
preach on a base, if I can ask you, we have been preaching every day, oh, the righteousness of God. If I ask you that, what is righteousness? What will you tell me? I am born again. What is the meaning of that? How does it profit you? How does the hope of Christ profit you as a child of God? Is it just a cliche? Is it just a mental accent? Or is actually what is happening in your life? So we are organizing these classes to make sure that you know in whom you have believed and the glorious privileges that you have in Christ. We don't want you to sit and you have a bank account full and you don't know and you die of poverty. You understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. Because there are so many glorious riches we have in Christ and we're not partaking of. We are organizing those discipleship classes so that you can get full of the knowledge of who you are, what you have, and what you can do. Okay? So we are going to start by the 23rd of this month. So every Sunday, we are going to be here by 9.30. So 9.30 to 10.30 is our discipleship class. And we are taking it also on Wednesdays. God has been so, I mean, the, the, the how do I say, the pastor of this church has been exceptionally kind to organize two sessions of Bible studies. It's not done anywhere. And we praise God and we appreciate him for the sacrifice. So what happens is that on Wednesdays, we'll take our Bible studies, will be our discipleship class. And it is serious. Because at the end of it, uh, our, our presiding bishop, Bishop Denison Johnson, is going to sign your certificates to say that you have actually participated. Amen. Amen. And for those who want to take a step ahead, that know, um, I, I want to, I don't really want to know, but I want to be able to pass on this knowledge. I want to teach. I want to mentor others. You are going to also be taking other exams while the discipleship class is going. So I'm encouraging you to sign up. We don't want to overcrowd you with too much information because we have something we are focused on now, which is our program that is coming up. But after that, you would not cease to see my face anywhere in your inbox, wherever I meet you, Walmart, wherever. I'm going to tell you about it because I know it is good. Hallelujah. It's good for you. Praise the Lord Jesus. All right. Thank you. God bless you. I'm waiting for you at the end. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just, uh, those that want a time, just stand up for the prayer. If you brought your time, if you pay by the way of, I recall it, Dell, the catch up, just stand up for the prayer. If you brought your time. Amen. Just let go task for the prayer. Father, we we'll thank you this morning. We give you all the glory and honor. We are here this morning, Father, like you said. We should bring our time. It is a form of trying and you prove that you open windows of blessings. We thank you this morning that we have indeed followed your order. We give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Let everybody just rise on your feet and we pray for the offering, Lord. We thank you for the offering. We bless you. We have brought our sacrifice and praise in the form of
mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. When I'm in trouble, who answers to our call? I will call him. I will. I call him. I will call him. When I am in jail, when I'm stuck, when I look left and right and behind me, there is no way to move. Then I lift up my eyes to the only this place that is not blocked. And then I call upon his name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We give you all the glory and the honor. We bless your name and exalt you because you are God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That in all that we've gone through, in all that we face, Lord, you are giving us the strength to endure. Amen. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome few people. Now, those that are just coming for the very first time, we say welcome. This is half a center continental church where nobody lives or dies. That is our vision. Mission is making disciples our customers. Amen. Amen. We want to bless you. But then, uh, Mr. Sandler just returned from Nigeria, right? Amen. 
And there's something that I want to say. Your book of delivering and taking. I don't know how says Bella did that. She was here and she was like a hero. So I was kind of confused on the, the thing. I saw the La Biro thing and I saw the person going and I said, oh. But when I asked the person, I was here. I don't know how you do it in the last year. I can teleport. You know, I can teleport. You can be here. I don't know. But what she did, I have no idea. You want to hear it in the scene La Biro. Wow, God, she's teaching that thing here. Yeah? I can go to any country. Well, brother Murphy, I can go to any country with that. That is me. Let me come to France. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 What a bless God again for this section as we continue our teaching. Uh, on the team that I catch on, and all will be our God who is more than enough. Amen. Amen. Our God who is more than enough. When the established by this guy called Stephen Colbert, he said, when people feel that it's never enough, then they're afraid, they're afraid to share. So people who hold by are people who believe in every time that it's not enough, and that we call the scarcity mindset, that you never had it all the time. So that even to share with a person that so to share with neighbors, to share with people who are in need is a difficult thing because you never have enough. Amen. You are always in scarcity. That is the mindset of many people. But I want to tell you this morning that we serve a God that is more than enough. So my inadequacies, I take those inadequacies and place it in the hands of God who can make my inadequacies more than. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, he that is able to do I mean, more than, more than, what we think of, he that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far beyond what we think or ask about. So that means every time when I ask God for two, he just will. If that scripture, according to that scripture, he's supposed to give me more than that. So God is a God of more than enough. Amen? Amen. We saw that in John chapter 5, or 6, sorry. When the, 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 the five loaves of bread and two pieces of flesh, we saw that play out. The Bible said, the Lord said, look. These people, that is, they, 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 they have a cube in here, say, well, it is, let the people go home. He said, far food for these people. Then the Bible said, but the Lord knew what he was about to do. That I am believing God to expand on that scripture one day. That the Lord knew what he wanted to do. So in other words, anything that I'm going through, whatever it is, God allowed him because he knows what he is going to do. If somebody walk out on me, if somebody betray me, if somebody deceive me, the Lord allowed him because he knows what he is about to do. Amen. He told us about found food. They only had two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread. Now, theological understanding here, or historian, or, 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 or part of that story said that the they, 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 they first 5,000 were men, but they were children and women, so they summoned up to 15,000. Now, just imagine 15,000 people, five more bread. Two pieces of fish. The Lord of equilibrium doesn't work right here. Amen? Yes. Now, the Lord of equilibrium is supposed to work for things to happen. Even if you go to the hospital, the doctors in this country, now, I'm not even I know about this country, they always have certain patients to a doctor. Even in the school, they have certain students to a teacher. It is a ratio. That means it makes the word bold, it makes the word good, or it makes the word lively. 
or more or less worrisome because the teacher and the students there's a good 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 uh, 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 collaboration right there we call it the law of equal labor it has to be equal to function amen, amen. but the five law for brethren two pieces of fish they were nothing close to that but when you present to God the little you have then he multiplies he is the goal of multiplication in Jesus mighty name Amen. so here we find even the 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 they were about to take up children away from what? As slaves. They also had a situation wherein they were about to take these children as slaves. And the man asked, so what do you have? Said, I have not much, but this is what I have. Just the little she had. The woman as Sarah found the same thing happened to her. Now she did it, and she did it. But Sarah found something happened to her. She had this, this little, and she didn't tell the man, Oh, your family, that means the God. She said, Your God. That means she understood right there that this man was operating with the God who was, is, and will always be in God. And when she followed the man's request, or who was never liked. Amen. 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 So, what we see today is that. Yes, your, your scarcity or your lack should not be a reason why you can't share. Because what the little you have is what God wants to pass to be much. Do not look at your limit, your, your, your limited, I mean, limited position to begin to draw by. Because the little things you the little thing you have in your hand that might you that book. Giving it up to God. Yeah. Who, who will make much out of it? Listen, King David was not who he was. He just had a little thing in him running. And God turned that little thing to much. Like our services to God, everybody here. You don't have to be the spiritual giant for God to use you. Just have the little fire. God turns the fire into a blessing. Amen. Amen. Just have that love fire. The Bible says he told Samuel, he said, man looks on the outside, but I go and will look at always every time I look in the inside. Amen. Then I see the little things that you have. I see that you love me. I see that you do the work for me. I see that you you you, you are all the time. When you talk about Bible study, in your spare time, you try your best to be. You are the one I'm coming for. Amen. Because when I do the work in you, you will never ascribe that to yourself. Amen. You will always say, hey, I have not been for the Lord who on my side. Amen. You see, God went to reach your place when you recognize that your elevation, your promotion, your upliftment in life is not because of who you are or what you've done. It's because of who God is. Amen. Amen. It's because of who he is. So why God is the God of multiplication? He's a God of principles. Amen. Amen. Why God supplies? Why he multiplies? He also got a principle. We'll talk about that. Now, we say God is a God of miracle. It's a God who does miracle. But it's not miracle that God does. In other words, the first approach to what's happening to you is not miracle. It's God's principle. If the principle of God cannot satisfy the situation, then miracle step in. Let me give you an example. We said that week before last, the children of Israel, the Bible said in the book of Numbers chapter 3, the Bible said every time the cow moved, they moved. So it means they could not do harvesting. 
They could not do plenty. They could not sow. Why? Because they, they are moving here and there was not depending upon their choices. Every time God would tell them to move. So when God tell them to move, they can't make rice, a rice or a barley, or whatever they were planting, they couldn't do it because they were always moving. So because of that, sowing and reaping were not possible, God sent manna from heaven. So whenever God says, that listen, I will do a miracle for you or in your life. He also looks at his principle that he also established. Hello? So in God's word, the first thing that God does when you ask him to intervene, have you followed my principle? The principle is not for only believers. If the only believer can carry on their principle, they become blessed. Because the first thing, like for instance, you got talent in your house and you got headache. Go to the time. Oh, ba, 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 ba. no. Go to the time. Talent is there. When the talent is not going to what he do, then he goes on board. So he said, the sick, only the sick will need you, the doctor. So God put that on earth. Not as foolish people. He empowered them also. Now, if the doctor can't work, then that means the person himself, that patient of the doctor can't work. So, what do you do? And you go to him and say, Lord, the principle that says that I should go to the doctor and say, it doesn't work. So, you start from him. You follow me? Are you following? Everything when it comes to God, God has said principles. Now, if the principle cannot be adhered to, if the principle is not possible to work, then God will do miracle. You yes. follow yes. So, the, 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 the fat number of bread and two pieces of fish, the, the Lord of evil labor could not work right there. So, because of that, the Bible said the Lord brought, he took the fat number of bread and two pieces of fish. And he blessed it. So every time you give your little to God, he blesses it. And then it becomes much. So the Bible says in the Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible says, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest time. So I will say to you today, people, whatever you say, you are so see. Whatever you stand up, you are so see. Whatever you talk or don't talk, you are so see. Everything we do on earth, we are sowing a seed. And there has to be a harvest. So if I saw this section, the Bible said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, he said, Be not deceived. For God is coming Whatever you sow, you shall reap. Whatever so that is sowing. So the Lord said, whatever true poor, whatever you sow, because there will always be sowing. If you grant these you sow a seed. If you don't grant these you sow a seed. If you can give money, you sow a seed. If you can spend too much, you sow a seed. Everything you do, you are sowing a seed. And to every soul, there is a reaping. Are you following? Yes. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest time. So every time of your life. Now listen, many of you here, you are glory. You are you are functioning in what your parents or your grandparents did. They sow seeds. Can you imagine somebody in America? You didn't know how that became. Yeah, you hear the young man who uh, there's a story that this guy who went to America and he just in the same week he found this woman and the woman is in America also with him. Now we think that because of love and walking together, but listen, most of the things that can happen to us they are seeds that people sow. Our parents sow seeds, so you may not be able to reap the seed. But it's also good that it transfer to the children in the children children. Right. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Now here you are in a, in, a, 
Africa, they get 55,000. We are more than half of them. Even in Nigeria, we get 100 million. They can't even live on 100 million. They can't even have the, 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 the population is it's not easy. 100 million will just Nigeria going up. Then think about Liberia, think about all the countries, Sierra Leone, all the countries that uh, uh, came around on the car. So, but the people who only gave 55,000 DB visas a year in Africa. Here you are. And you play. What well, an ISO Africa gave up like a billion. And in that bill you are selected, in among everybody that will play in Africa, we will only 55,000. In the midst of it, your name is selected. It's not because you are pretty, or you are handsome, or you can talk too much. There are people that are still in Liberia that I know that we talk about America was a family, they're still there. They can't come. So what I'm saying to you, remember we are the, the product of seeds that people sow. And that's the, the reason the Bible says do good to everybody, especially those that are of the same cause of the Anybody you see on earth, you meet, if the opportunity is given, you do good to them. Sow the seed. Hospitality. They get the word to live. Sow the seed. If that financial depleted, sow the seed. Because that seed you sow, there is a harvest on this way. Amen. Nobody can escape that. You can escape. Every day we sow seed. If you read the word of God, if you make it happen, you sow. <laughs> you, you, you sow a spiritual insight. That means every day when I pray, something is happening. Every day when I read the word, something is happening. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest time. Amen. Amen. Sowing and reaping is part of life. There is no way to escape it. If you don't want, there is no picture at the end of the day. You are sowing. When the two weeks of one week, some put one week, some put two weeks, so a month, you get the harvest. That's why you go to sow good seeds. You can be so bad, you reap it. If you sow deception, you reap it. Amen? Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, whatever you do, you are here sowing. Or oh, after sowing, you are reaping. <coughs> Let us be careful what we sow. Because we shall reap. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So, sowing is part of life. Now, if it is, then sowing has a benefit also if it is done in a good, in a good way. So if I am looking for a, 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 a harvest, I got to be in the place of sowing. Let, let, let's look at Psalm 126, verse 5. Let me say, the law indeed God respect his principles. And his principle is, is applied when it cannot meet whatever that is being used for the miracle comes in. Now here, because sometimes in our life, we see everything we have, we want to be, and you know, we want to have an abundance to give. They, 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 they had it, the widow, they call it widow's mind. The woman gave everything she has, she put it in the offering basket. Now, people are giving, but this is what Jesus said. Amongst all that they are giving, this woman gave the highest. So it was. So she took a low, just a small that she had, and she gave it to the God who kept on applying. 
Amen. Now, metaphysics have to also be. And so difficulty, and we, 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 we wouldn't do that only with my family. Now, if everybody will ever put a concern about his or her family, how can we survive? Amen? Amen. Because many of us say we have gotten, we have gotten responses from people when it comes to helping. Well, most in Liberia and people help us every month, they try to do what they could do to set up something for our livelihood. Many of us here. So I know you just made a friend. Somebody told me you are here, said, you didn't know where to go. Some people here today, that when they want a TV, there was no sponsor. Somebody decided, you know what, I will help you to come to the United States. So this war that we live in, it's not me, myself, and I. Whatever you have, the Bible said, they, they who sow in tears shall reap with a joyful sinking. There is a sowing, and there are sowings that sometimes you don't want to. But because there is a harvest, you sow. Amen? Amen. Because there is a harvest, you sow. It may be painful, but yet they think, no, no, they're not very important to, to the woman who is pregnant and they are in labor. All the pains, some of them will be blown by the elbow and that round. And I heard what people say, I will never go to ID. After the morning, they, they eat the labor of what they cry. I saw the child come up. I believe the woman will go. All that pain. Because the baby came up, they forget. That's why you don't play with women, you don't play with their children business. They can spoil them whatever way. Because imagine the labor to went through. As soon as the baby came up one time, all the pain disappeared. They don't remember it anymore. Amen? Amen. In Jesus. So there are soy that can be painful. But it comes with a good harvest. Amen? Now, let me ask you a situation in the book of Luke chapter 8. Do you know what 43? There's a situation about a lady who had an issue of blood. For two of good years, Luke chapter 8, beginning of verse 23, I mean 43, sorry, not 43, 43, Luke chapter 8. Now, watch this thing. So, that, like I said before, doctors are there for the sick people. When the doctors can not diagnose or treat whatever sickness you have, then that was that, that particular law doesn't work anymore. This is when God will step in when it comes to miracle. So miracle wouldn't come, if, if, uh, miracles wouldn't come when the laws are, uh, they can never be applied. Now listen to this woman. Listen to this, this uh, uh, verse. They say, and a woman who has suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years and has spent all her money and could not be you. Verse 44. Keep up behind, behind him, who Jesus, and touch the friends of his altar room. And immediately her bleeding start. Now, the first thing that we saw here, she had gone to doctor's physician. All the way to doctor, some, some translation said she went to doctor, some said physician. And there was no way for her to be you. So that means the law of a sick person going to doctor to be you could not work right here. You are following? So when it can't work, then that means then God steps in because the principle he put into place could not meet the demand of a place. So he said, well, if it doesn't work, then now I'm going to step in with a miracle. Amen. When Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, when he saw indeed, that's why he asked, if it is you, who tell me to come to you because in my studies, according to the Lord, nobody wants some water. So Jesus, if you are walking on water, that means it is a miracle. You're fine? Yeah. So then, if it's you, tell me to come to you. Because this is 
are no more. So what we see today here is that people of the kingdom will take privilege, will take, I mean, will take this as a power thing, do it as a sin. But we got to take it to heart. We got to practice. That without soul, there can be no reason. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Without soul, there can be no reason. So now, God brought this thing to us today. There are people of God. It is time for to get involved in soul. Amen. Amen. Now, in soul, I will recommend, and that was I do and I ask. Let your giving, let your sowing, let it start from the house of God. Let everything you do start from the house, the good that start from the house of God. Look in the midst of your. You see people that you know for true, sometimes you know, but sometimes you don't know want to ask. That you know the person is going through some financial difficulties. You don't have the whole world. But be a help to that person. Be part to notice these people. Try to be there to give unto them. Be part to notice that you will be there to help somebody. Be a giver and not just a receiver. Be somebody who is in the place of just releasing. Men of we have office. And if I was any more who with who will leave the poverty. But if the one who will leave the madness. He said, cast the bread from the water. You don't know where the weeping will come from. Don't just be me, myself, and I. Don't just live it your giving, live it the way you live. Only you and your household. And stand on the outside. If you notice your neighbor doesn't have, help the neighbor. Amen? Amen. Be a generous person. Be there to give. And that also comes to the house right here with us as a church. This church also, the Bible right this one right here, where you are seated. Your blessings should be a part of the existence of this ministry. It means that why and if you want to school and if you agree that indeed this place is a fertile ground, that means God is here. If God, if God was not here, you would have been here. Now if God is here, this is the place where you need to do your soul. Because for every soul, there is a reason. But now, if you sow in the house of God, this one you're not just sowing anywhere. You are sowing in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Let your sowing, let it be generous. And let it be a kingdom establishment. A kingdom work. Amen? And the reason we always go there, now many pastors when they come to this thing, we all go to control our money to But it is expedient many a times we also talk about these things. Because many of us, the reason we are only working from picture to picture is because giving is a hard thing for us. Now, one time somebody met me and asked me this question that we might think wrong, I mean, not wrong, wrong. I said, if God wants to elevate you, he wants to promote you, he wants to bless you for nothing, why would he want to bless you? Those are questions we need to ask. If I, 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 me, myself, and I, you're not dispensing, you're not helping other people, you just concentrate on yourself. Why would God give promotion? Why would he bless you financially if you are only concerned about you? Why would he? You see, let me say one time, the pipe where the water runs through, it never gets dry. Because 
it is used as a word, as a, a, a medium, it never gets right. People who all give, they can never be right. Amen? Amen. People who always give, they can never be right. Because the Bible said the Lord gave seed to the soul. So if you are in the place of soul, the Lord gave you seed. That your head can never go dry when it comes to money. That's what money is. If you are always giving, you always give, you always give, he will never allow you. Because why? Listen. As we live on earth, God, nobody sees money coming from heaven down. Do we? No. It is between and most us that money flows. Now, if you are only keeping your own for yourself and you are not sending it around, why would God give you the seed? Because you will it, you read it. It's good for you. Seeds are meant to be what? Planted. Sow the seed. In Genesis chapter 26, the Bible said, Acid, sow, and you reap more than what you will handle. Are you following? So, soul of giving should be the part of life. So, I'm going to say, you should give generously. Amen? Amen. But people, many of us, we are listening. Life is there to be enjoyed. But if you just take a portion and give it to the kingdom, the rest that is left is blessed. Amen? Amen. Now, many of us that are seated right here and in the Christian dome, that payment is half of us. To tell us 10% that war. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure I look at everyone. 
one who pays half of the million dollars. But when I arrive, if I see Linda giving 500, I give 500 more. Just one, give more than all. Amen. Amen. I love the giving aspect because it makes me feel good that I was able to give to a worthy cause. Can you imagine? response to 
to his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Now, like Brother Moses, he left when he flew. Do you know how many people play the play and the play dog been found? And you got in like people, and the Lord there protected. Because hey, there are people in Abraham who don't want to see you prosper. When they hear you coming, they already set you up. And he went to that place and he came back safely. And not because Brother well, Moses had some of the too intricate or what. It's just the grace of God. And that is with everybody here. God's grace is the focus every time. Don't frustrate his grace. Amen. Amen. Be kingdom minded. Think about God every day. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think pilot, pilot is a portion. If you think God, then God becomes your portion. The songwriter says, the law is my portion in the name of the living. How are we here in God that we choose today? To be generous to God. And listen, somebody said one time, God doesn't want your money. He's looking for other people to bless you. He doesn't want your money. Who told you? Now, this guy that came in last year, last year, uh, uh, sorry. People, somebody bought their church day, now they don't have a cash to give it to them. They're depending on people. But you see that person that did it? You know what God will do for them? That person can never be broken by you. Because the, the earmark, the kingdom work. And then you hear, you work. And you enjoy life, it's good to enjoy life. But you see what I do first? I emotion boss. Then the rest is, is best. Then he gave me the wisdom to use it. So I don't read from page of that instruction. You follow me? Then before I do it, there's somebody in the best. Somebody in the church here. As soon as he sent this over there, you go smart him about that. I can't join him, you go smart him. Yeah. The person stop this week, I'm going to say the reason he can start in me. Yeah, man. Every time when I'm done, I start feeling the prayer right here. Wow. My lawyer said, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And, and you are also to pray something that I want. Amen? Amen. Like, no, you have come thus far with God, you know how he operates. Don't treat him like you don't know him. God has blessed you so much, many of you. Blessings that you did not even, you, you, you did not even earn. And it came to you so fascinating. Bam! The Lord bless you. But here you are. Why are you giving me the church? As I close, I'm going to pray and say, Lord, you gave it to me, I'll turn it back to you. That is the principle right there. But God gave it back to me. He was the one who gave to you. Many of you work. You think that you do you know what it means to get up every day to go to work. So you work 12 hours. That's what life do you have to work for 12 hours? But here they say you still in your sound mind. You can still operate. You still have good judgment. <clears throat> it's because God is generous to you. Amen. In Jesus' name. That is possible. Yeah, I'm going to get it. 
dedicated to any of those things. There is a, he told me there is a better time coming for you. That's what he told me. All those things are going to allow you is that so that he can sit to meet you in a better, better position. So when you get up, wake up with joy, trust in God. The Bible says those are waiting upon the Lord. It's a review as the Lord. Waiting in the destiny now is trusting that any time come from any time from this moment. Don't give up. Keep going. The Lord who brought you thus far is faithful to continuously take you through. You are here and you are despondent. You are discouraged. You sometimes you feel that there's nothing beyond your life that you have. But let the Lord be your hope. Amen. Hope in Him. The Bible says, Christ is hope. Don't, 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 don't get away. Let me bow hands this time. Father, we want to thank you this time for bless you this moment. Thank you for your people, Lord, that you have indeed, Lord, oh God, that you have spoken to your heart, you have completed them, that we should be the kingdom minded people, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So from this day, Lord, Father God, will be a priority to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that from this day, Lord, you will help us to be given and this receiver. That will be generous, Lord, Father God. That will be kingdom-minded people. Even those in our midst that are going through tough time, Lord. I pray this time, Lord, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you intervene, Lord. Intervene in the situation, Father God.
Tu as le peur.